read uh, this scripture before we sit down, Zechariah 9, and uh, verse number 11 and 12, using NIV translation, Zechariah 9, verse 11 and 12, as for you, oh, you have missed you, you want to tell me only one person was in the service yesterday? I have a new church today. As for you, wow, as for you, yeah, this is what the Lord says, because of the blood of my covenant with you, remember it is God speaking to you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the water pit. Return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. Somebody say divine restoration. Let me hear people talking. Say divine restoration. Say it again. So I want you to prophesy and say divine restoration is my portion. Say this is season, this is my season for divine restoration. Say this is my season for divine restoration. Can I hear you prophesying by yourself? Again. Again, we may be seated in the wonderful presence of the Lord. Divine restoration is when God restored to you twice. Divine restoration is when God himself intervened divinely and restored to you twice. Divine restoration is when God intervened and restored to you whatever got lost and wasted years. Divine restoration is when God intervened and restored to you what got lost in your life and you know it. And then he began to restore to you what belonged to you and you didn't know. Hey, are you hearing that? Yeah. What it belonged to you and you didn't know. That's why he's saying he will restore twice to you. Restore? If someone give back to you what it belonged to you, that person will give it to you only what God trusts. So there is no profit there. Are you getting what I'm saying? There is no increase. So there is stagnation. The reason why we are talking of divine restoration is because there is what belonged to you and you didn't know. God who is omniscient, he knows it better. Job 42, verse number 10. Job 42, verse number 10. Let me try to use NKJV, which says, And the Lord restored Job Roses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. The Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice. Twice. Somebody say twice. Come on, say twice. Is it to read fashion says, and the Lord restored the fortunes of Job 
when he had prayed for his friend. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. Somebody say, I'm ready now for divine restoration. Say, I'm ready now for divine restoration. You see, when God restored Job's fortune, Job's fortune, this is what followed. The Bible says, the Lord, verse number 12, blessed the later part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, 6,000 camels, 1,000 yoke of oxen, and 1,000 donkeys. And he also had seven sons and three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, the second Kezia, and the third Karen Hapuk. Nowhere in all the land where there are found women as beautiful as Job's daughters, and their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. After this, verse 16, after this, everyone say after this. Hey, come on, say after this. So after this, Job lived 140 years. He saw his children and the uh, children to the fourth generation, and Job died an old man and full of years. And God will do it again. After you begin to experience divine restoration, you will live many years. Divine restoration does not come and you enjoy it for a month. And you enjoy it for a few years. After the restoration, Job lived 100. After, after. After he lived 140 years. And he died an old man full of ears. An old man full of ears. Lift up your right hand towards heaven. May the Lord God who changes not. Amen. The Lord who do what he did in the days of old. May he do it again in your life. May he restore the way he restored your fortune. And increase many years after that. May you live to enjoy divine restoration for many years. No sickness is permitted to terminate your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare and also I prophesy as a prophet sent to his generation. You will enjoy divine restoration for many, many years after this. In Jesus' mighty name. And the church say, divine restoration. This is now the third revelation about divine restoration. Number three. Divine restoration is receiving your inheritance which your grandfather and your father would give to you. <laughs> Let me go slow. Divine restoration is receiving your inheritance. Somebody say my inheritance. Do you believe you have an inheritance? Everyone who was born by a father, and I don't know anyone who was not born by a father. Whether you knew the father or not, but if there was a father somewhere for the conception to take place, according to divine character, you have an inheritance. Age. And divine restoration is receiving your inheritance. Somebody say my inheritance. Which your grandfather and your father would give to you. And every, according to the word of God, Proverbs, 
13, verse number 22. I want you to receive a new revelation from this scripture now. This is Proverbs 13, verse number 22. I'm using New Living Translation, which says, Good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren. Good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth passes to the godly. This is divine order. Somebody say divine order. Divine order is this. Divine order. That everyone is supposed to receive inheritance from grandfather. <laughs> hey, some of the people are saying, hey, even my grandfather. <laughs> even that grandfather. Yeah. And if you didn't, if it didn't happen to you, don't worry. Don't, don't, don't worry. Why? There is also divine order. And there is divine restoration. It happened to someone, and unless we see it, some of the people are wondering, is this still from the Bible? Yes. Go to the book of Second Samuel, Chapter 9, verse number 6, using NIV. When Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to David, he bowed down to pay him honor. David says to Mephibosheth, at your service, he replied, Don't be afraid, verse 7. David said to him, for I will surely show you kindness for the sake of your father, Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land that belong to your glad father's soul. And you will always eat at my table. Aye. Remember this is, we are talking of the first king of Israel. First king of Israel. Who took the half of the rod? If you read your Bible well. Oh, King Saul. Because he was the first king. First? First, first king. First king in Israel. So he exercised all the authority and all the power to get good rods, high rods, even low rods. <laughs> and then this man called. Uh, uh, King Saul, the grandfather now to Mephibosheth, he died, I don't know if I can say premature or let's leave King Saul alone. But here, amen, comes a grandson who was a dream, who was an hopeless. And he was living in a very poor village called Rodebal. And a time or the hour came for divine restoration for that realm. And when uh, divine rest, the hour of restoration, divine restoration come, there is what I call in a good grammar, divinity cantatas. Divinity cantatas. I know some of the people are thinking, oh, Bishop now is speaking in tongues. No. I'll speak in tongues later. I like it. This is uh, English. Divinity. When the hour of uh, divine restoration comes to your life, there is combination of all manner of divinity, including divine commotion. Somebody say divine commotion. And divine dislocation and divine relocation. Hello? Because it happened in the palace, king be, began to think about uh, Jonathan. And he called some officials and he said, do we have uh, any, any, any one of Jonathan who is left? And uh, one man said, uh, I don't know if he's a son because he's a ram. 
is somewhere in the village. Say, quickly, get that man, get the government motorcade, and get that man here. When it is divine restoration, divine, many things will happen in your life. Hey, somebody say divine commotion. Let me hear you talking. Say divine commotion. Say divine dislocation. You, you see, divine restoration will bring divine dislocation to many people because many will be dislocated from lentil houses to their own homes. Oh, I have a good news for all the tenants. I have a good news. I have a good news. God will restore to you all the money you have been paying as rent. Because according to divine order, there is nowhere was written that you should be a tenant. Come on. Do you read the Bible? Let me see your Bible. Not your phone, not your phone, please. I'm talking of the Bible. Can I see your Bible? I'm a part of our... uh, Let me see your Bible. Tomorrow, somebody say tomorrow. Tomorrow. I will carry my Bible. I will carry my Bible. If you carry other things, why, why not this Bible? you this is a burden. Bible is not a burden. Bible is not. Praise the Lord. Someone is interceding. Why can't he bypass that one? I'm saying this. I'm saying this. I'm saying this. I know I know what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, the enemy can tamper with any Bible in your phone, but cannot tamper with this manual. It can corrupt when you want to read, you find it is not there. But not this one. That's why I carry mine wherever I go. You will find this my Bible. Even when I was sending my son to go and take uh, something uh, in the car, uh, I think yesterday night, you heard me saying, where I keep my Bible, you will get honey there. So bring me honey. But it is where I keep my Bible. So even the family, they know that in the car, there is where Muse keeps the Bible. So, it is written of me. Come on, lift up your Bible. And those who didn't carry today, lift up your right hand, empty hearted. Because I don't want you to lift up your phone, please. Lift up, I'm sorry, it is prophetic. You are forgiven in the house of God. Say, I'm, I'm, I'm quoting uh, Hebrew 10, verse number 7. Somebody say, Law, I have come to do all what is written of me in the volume of this book. Law, I have come to do all what is written of me in the volume of this book. It is written in the volume of this book. Hear me. Are you listening to me? That you will have your own house. It is written in the volume of this book. That you will build houses. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone say tomorrow I remember to carry it. Now listen to me. I have a good news. It doesn't matter the village you are living in. Divine commotion. Is about to happen. Is about. And he said. Verse number seven. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. They will say so. For I will surely. Hey. I will surely. Oh, show you kindness for the sake of your father. Jonathan. I will restore to you. Oh, the Lord. Now, he said, I will restore to you. Is it yours? Hey. I will restore to you. 
you were wondering, I will restore to you all the land, all, all the land that belonged to your grandfather. Why? In accordance to Proverbs 13, 22, every grandfather <laughs> should give an inheritance to grandchild. May God begin to restore to you Amen. what your grandfather was supposed to give it to you. Amen. And here a man from a poor village in the morning, but in the evening, he owned all the land which belonged to King Saul. You know, Let's not talk much. But you know, in Africa, we are African, is it? You know, when they gained the independence, the first president, the first in many countries of Africa, they owned the, almost half of the nation. We, we are talking about Africa. <laughs> Amen, Africa. Somebody. Did I mention Kenya? No. I'm talking about Africa. Africa. Huh? I have cr crossed this Africa using vehicle almost every country. Yeah, so I, I know Africa. I know Africa. I know Africa. <laughs> and uh, can you imagine now someone who is a grandson of one of the African presidents? And then, maybe the, the current government of that country, the president who is maybe sitting president, says to one of the grandson of the first president of that country, I want to restore to you all the land. <laughs> you, now you are getting what I'm saying. Now, I want you to see what happened to this lame overnight. Because when it comes to divine restoration, things can happen to someone and the people begin to think otherwise. Uh, somebody say, I will watch my mouth from today. Because things will begin to happen to believers from 2020. Going back, hey, to 2010, to 2010, to 19, to 2020, and, yeah, and uh, to, to 19, and to 1980, and to 19, do I have people from there? Okay, and to 19, someone says 60. Can you imagine from 2020 to 1960, when God gathered all those years, which Kankawom ate, and restore everything, and then from 1960, he go back again, to grandfather. When God restore all what God lost in your life, then he goes to your father, Jonathan. Then he goes to your grandfather, Saul. Things can happen to you. And from that day, people will not understand you again. Watch out your mouth. The way you people like, uh, many people like to give glory to the devil. This time, give glory to God. Amen. Because devil cannot do divine restoration. Amen. Somebody say, I'm set. I'm set. I don't know if you are, if sure you are set. So how many people are set? In the divine character, everyone say divine character. Everyone say divine character. 
And I want us to see that divine character again and again. In the divine character, somebody say divine character. According to divine order, in the divine character, you are supposed, you, somebody say me. You are supposed to receive inheritance from your father and from your grad. But many of you didn't. Because even they didn't have something to give it to you. But according to divine character, they had it. Only things happened. What belonged to them is coming to you. Somebody say, it's coming to me. Let me hear people talking. So if you didn't receive, don't worry. Somebody say, I will not worry. Now I know the truth. Let me hear you. I will not worry. Now I know the truth. Are you ready now for divine restoration? Now you know what is divine restoration. Somebody say, now I know what is divine restoration. Let me hear you talking. I know what is divine restoration. That's why some of you will have large tracts of land. Large tracts? Large tracts? Large tracts of land. There is someone who knew about divine restoration. Divine? His name is Jabez. And Jabez prayed a prayer which you should pray. Amen. In uh, uh, First Chronicles, message translation, I like it. First Chronicles, chapter number 4. First number 10, message translation says this. What did I say? Chapter? No, you exchange. <laughs> when I say 10 4, you, you exchange. Message, do we have it? Oh. Huh? Okay, let's read. me, oh bless me. Why? Why one is not enough? He was talking of divine restoration. Bless me, oh bless me. And then, give me land. Large tracts of land. Give me. Uh -huh. And then, large. May that become your portion. Before Jesus comes, I prophesy large tracts of lies. Large tracts of lies. This man knew that though I was born and my mother called me Jabez, Solo Maker. <laughs> Solo? Don't mind how you came. He knew. He knew something. About divine restoration. Those who know about divine restoration, they don't pray small, small prayers. Come on. If you listen to those who know about divine restoration, how they pray, how? Oh. They pray dangerous prayers. They can pray things which can offend you. If your prayer has not offended anyone, then you have not prayed. Did you hear what I'm saying? If your prayer has not offended anyone, you have not prayed. Because you can pray things which, which can uh, soothe people. But you can pray a prayer. One time I listened to a man praying. Listened to a man of God praying in his room. Bishop William Duncan. We were in Dar es Salaam. I think... Uh, 1993, uh, somewhere there, yeah, 
1993. And uh, I was a Kenyan who was privileged because I drove up to there. So they requested me if I can go for those men of God from the Yarums. Are you getting it? So can you imagine me going for the one man and in his room he is praying inside. Then I thought if that prayer is true, then that is prayer. Hey, the things man is speaking to God. Hey. Don't listen to generals when they are praying. You can be offended for nothing. <laughs> because this man, when you are trusting God for fuel, when you are trusting God, he is trusting God for a, fee, for a lad near airport. Now you wonder, me I'm trusting God for, because I drove without enough fuel. <laughs> and here is a man who is praying and asking God, God, because of my missions, missions all over the world, since you have commissioned me and you have given me this mandate, oh God, now I'm trusting you for a good lad near airport. Where well, I'll be coming out of my house the next uh, two minutes, I am in the airport. Now, do you buy lads near airport with two million? Oh, somebody say, I'm changing my prayers. Now I know I can have large trucks of lads. I want someone to stop praying for a prot. It's okay. It's okay. God will still you give it to you because you have been praying and he doesn't have dustbin for prayers. But I want you to trust God. Amen. Praise the Lord. For a lot. Amen. All those who have been paying rent receive divine restoration. And all those who have Houses. Somebody say houses. May God give you homes. Amen. When we built our first house, everyone was excited. I was not excited. People asked why. I said, this cannot be my dream house. Dream house cannot be in a, in a, in a, in a, in a quarter nickel. No. Because you see in a quarter and acre, when you, you go through the gate, are you getting it? Where you park the car, tomorrow you will ask someone, akuwa galiri nyuma. Dream house hakuna mahali mtu huwa anasema galiri nyuma. Praise the Lord. Is somewhere... Between gate and the house, kuna ka distance, and then kuna ka roundabout. Kwa hivyo, unapake gari kama imeagali ya mahali inatoka. So, kishu wakuna kuagaliri wa nyuma. May God give you a home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Some say divine restoration is my portion. Very quickly, very, let's begin to receive the keys to divine restoration. Very quickly. Amen. I'm a teacher. I know how to bring these things. Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse number 9, And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you bind on earth will be bowed in heaven. And whatsoever you lose here on earth will be loosed in heaven. That means kingdom of God is kingdom of keys. Somebody say kingdom of keys. Let me see the right hand of anyone who is ready for the keys to divine restoration. Are you ready now? Now you know what is divine restoration. No matter the key, you will go for it. Is it? No matter the price, you will pay for Are you ready? Key number one. Everyone say king number one. 
Say king number one. Return to the almighty. Key number one. Return. It's very crucial. You need to listen to it very keenly. Job 22-23. Job 22-23. Job 22-23. Try to go there quickly because I'm winding up. As I begin, let's read NIV. NIV, NIV, wait, wait. Let's read. One, two, go. If you return to the arm, um, if you return. And I want you to understand these words were spoken not to a sinner, not to a drunkard. These words were spoken to a just man. These words were spoken to Job. Come on. And he, 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 these words were spoken to Job when he was really suffering, when he lost everything. And these words were spoken to him, and it is written, if you return to the Almighty, if you return to the Almighty then you will be restored. This is the word the whole world need to hear. All believers all over the world, they need to hear this. If you return, if you return, if you return to the Almighty, then you will be restored. When it was spoken to Job, uh, you see, New Living Translation says something. I wish you can see it. It says, if you return to the Almighty, you'll be restored. So clean up your life. So clean up <laughs> your life. So clean up your life. If you return, New Living Translation, if you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So clean up your life. Somebody say, I will clean up my life. I'm not hearing you say, I will clean up my life. This message came to Job when he was going through difficulties of losing everything. But it was not easy for Job to act immediately. It was not easy because he did not know when he left God. Yeah. Job didn't know when he left God. And here is a man saying to him, return to the Almighty for you to be restored. And here, he knows he has been walking. You know, if you, even now, someone has asked, when did I left him? Kuna mtu wanauliza, I return to God. I return? Niritoka lini? Eh? Someone say, I will return. How did Job leave God without knowing? When he left the life of faith, and he began to live a life of fear. Job 1, verse number 4. When he left the life of faith, and he began to live the life of fear, as we still use New Living Translation, Job sons, verse number 4, would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When this celebration ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them, for Job said to himself, Perhaps my children have sinned and have cast God in their heart. This was Job regular practice. Job, when every feast ended up, there was a fear which used to enter Job. The fear which also normally enter to many parents. Not many parents believe that their children will come back from school, even when there is no COVID. There is that fear. There is. Now, now, I want you to see this scripture. Everyone, make sure you are there so that you may underline your Bible. And since you didn't carry your Bible, I don't know what to underline. Romans 14, verse number 23. 
let me use NIV. But whoever has doubt is condemned if he eat, if they eat. Because their eating is not from faith. And everything does not come from faith is sin. Everything which does not come from faith is sin. Everything. Even giving without faith. Hey. Even prayer without faith. <laughs> giving. There are people know that they are good, they are faithful tithers. They give tithe out of fear. <laughs> and that's why they are angry always when they give tithe. One day, left. When people are paying tithe, take two minutes and look at the eyes of people. <laughs> they are not all that happy. They are saying, is either, let him take because I don't know what will happen to my life. Recently, I told someone, Someone, I was correcting someone, I said, no, God does not send devourers. So if you don't pay tithe, it is not God who sends devourers. Devourers are already there naturally. Yeah. <laughs> it is not God who sends devourers. It is not God who attacks you when you don't give tithe. What God does is to rebuke devourers. I so give out of love. Somebody say out of love. So the kind of burnt offering job used to give daily was not love offering, was fear offering. And I wish you live with the believers like me. I wish you can know the fear believers carries in their heart. You see them talking big. They carry vegetables heart. They are full of fear. In fact, during this period of uh, COVID, believers feared more than non-believers. Hey! Hey! Hata muni nyamazi ntaogea. Fear. Somebody say fear. There are many jobs even today. Fear, fear. They have a great God who can rebuke, who can protect them, who can protect them from all manner of sicknesses. Somebody say all manner of sicknesses. Hey, come on, say from all manner of sicknesses. Deuteronomy 7.15, NIV translation. No, New Living translation. So this is something very important. And I wish anyone can see it. It says what? New, new living translation. Quickly. Higher. Let's read. Stop there. Again. All. I'm asking you all. Minus which one? Hey, come on, people of God. All. Minus which one? Are you sure of what you are talking about? All. All means all. Minus nothing. May God deliver you from fear. May God deliver you from fear. May that fear that you can die because of any, any sickness disappear right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hey! Church. We are in this world to be in church. We are in this world to silence the plans of the enemy. If we join the world to fear, what will the world do? If church joined the world to fear, when Jesus was sleeping in the boat and his disciples walked him up and they said, don't you care, we are perishing. He wondered, perishing by what? What is causing us to perish? He asked them, you of little faith, you of little faith, 
you of little faith. He didn't join them that they were perishing. When the world wake you up and tell you that we are perishing, calm the storms. When the world fear, they are supposed to raise Jesus in us. And they say to us, you carry Jesus. Don't you care we are perishing? And then we calm the storms. We are in this world to silence the wickedness, to silence the plagues, to silence the predicament, not to join the world to lament in their fears and to join their songs. When will we stop to conform to the worldly pattern? And we are warned by the Bible in Romans 12, verse number 2. Do not, do not, do not conform to the pattern, to the worldly pattern, to the worldly system, but be it transformed by the renewal of mind. You need to face every day with that courage of faith. And remember, whatever is not of faith, it is sin. So return. Somebody say, I will return. I know I have customers here tonight. Begin to return. You have done many things without faith. It is sin. You have been operating with fear. Fear. And he said, in Job 3, verse number 25, he said, oh, what I feared. So that means the death of his children was his fear. He used to fear. And that's why they died, all of them, Ten of them, seven sons and three children in one day. And he said, oh, what? What I feared. What I feared. New Living Translation. What I feared. Someone say, I will not fear again. Someone say, I will not fear Corona. Because let me tell you, if you fear it, it will come to you. Someone say, I will not fear, I will not fear. Say, hey, hey, someone, uh, rise up, rise up, rise up, please. Say, I will not fear corona again. I will not fear corona again. Say it again. Say, it will not come to me. Say, as you mean it. Say, it will not come to me. Because God will protect me from all Hey, come on! Who will protect you? Who will protect you? Hey, Deuteronomy 7.15. May that become your scripture the remaining days of your life. May that become your scripture the remaining days of your life. The remaining days of your life. The remaining days of your life. Somebody say, I'm returning. I will be restored. Somebody say, I will, I, 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 I'm returning to Almighty. I'm not hearing you. The Lord will protect you from all sickness. From? 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 Hold your offering. I want to make some very powerful prophetic scripture declaration here as I am commanded. As I am commanded. They are scripture. Hallelujah. Hey. Yes. Yes. From Psalms 121, NKJV, they are yours. They are yours. Don't think 
I'm not sent to you. I'm sent. Yeah, I'm sent. Are you ready? So uh, I want you, uh, you have written down, put your notebook down, take your offering. Now, the Lord is your keeper. Uh, 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 uh. The Lord is your keeper. Amen. Don't worry the what they are putting. Me, I'm saying first number five. NKJV. The Lord is your keeper. Amen. Who is your keeper? Who is your keeper? Lord. World Health Organization? Lord. Who is your keeper? Lord. New injunction? Lord. New immunization? Lord. Who is your keeper? Lord. The government? Lord. Who is your keeper? Lord. The Lord is your keeper. Lord. You, you say believing amen. amen. And while I make this prophetic declaration... Uh, we shall be giving our offering. The Lord is your keeper. Amen. The Lord is your shade Amen. at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, Amen. nor the moon by night. Hallelujah. The Lord shall preserve you Amen. from all evil. Hallelujah. From all evil. Hallelujah. From all evil, Amen. divine preservation is your portion. Hallelujah. The Lord will preserve you. The Lord shall preserve you. Hallelujah. The Lord shall preserve you. Hallelujah. The Lord shall preserve you. Hallelujah. From all evil. I am preserved. From all evil, He shall preserve your soul. It is well with 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 your soul. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out. There will be going out in your life. Nothing will cause you to remain indoors. No sickness will cause you to remain indoors. Hallelujah. There will be going out always in your life. Hallelujah. The Lord will preserve you are going out and you are coming in. As you go out, you will come in. Hallelujah. Every time you go out of your house, you will come in. In the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. Hallelujah. From this time forth and forevermore. From this time and forevermore. From this time and forevermore. From this time and forevermore. Hallelujah. I prophesy there will be always going out. Going out. Doing great businesses. Doing great ministries. Hallelujah. Missionary work. Amen. They will be going out. Yes. Going to the place of work. Yes. And after that, they will be coming in. Yes. You will not go out and perish on a road accident. Hallelujah. You will go out and come back. Yeah, we shall come back. You will not go out to contaminate any virus. Hallelujah. You will go out and come back a healthy person. Hallelujah. Because divine restoration is your portion. Divine restoration is your portion. Hallelujah. Put your hearts together for Jesus. Oh, shit. Oh, shit.